Well, hey, my friends, I'm so glad that you are with me on another episode of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. I'm super excited to have Greg and Susan Card with me today, who are not only incredible artists who love Jesus, but also a real uh, mother and father to so many artists uh, in the kingdom today. And just are doing incredible things for many, many years and, and just uh, have an incredible legacy that I want them to be able to share about as well. So guys, so honored that you're on the podcast with me today. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. We're, you know, we're really, really glad to be here. And, and as I said to you before, <clears throat> you know, I listen to your podcast. So <laughs> to be able to, to be asked to be on one is just really a, a pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely. I was I was trying to think in my mind before we got started today, I was like, when did I meet you guys? And I was thinking back, um, we met through a mutual friend, and I'm thinking back about the time we were at Morningstar when you guys were over there, I think not too long of, of starting leading mm -hmm. that arts ministry over there in a conference room. And there weren't too many of us there, but we were all leading prophetic art and arts ministries and that sort of thing and what was this maybe 2010 11 just trying yep. to get our arms around yep. what was god saying in that time yep. and uh so anyway just great history I, i'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves because uh for those folks that are just getting to know you i've i've ramped it up and they're like these people are awesome so tell us who you guys are where you're from what you do creatively and then we'll kind of jump into some of your backstory so Ladies first. Oh, thank you, hon. <laughs> so uh, I, we, I've been a full-time artist of a sort, making things my, my whole life, one way or the other. Um, and uh, we met up in the Midwest and got, you know, Greg and I, he was at the time a teacher and I was an uh, printmaker. And then uh, he's originally from California. We hooked up out there, showed in galleries, got married moved across the country, always doing art, always making things. And, and then for a long time, um, as he continued to make paintings, I worked with glass and metal and did art and craft shows for 21 years. And I'm pretty sure we crossed paths, you and I, what? in Georgia. <laughs> and I think there was a group of guys in the morning at a particular group of shows, yeah. a higher yeah. level. They bring out their guitars, banjos, and everything and play. And I am pretty sure you were there. <laughs> yeah, the, the fine yeah. craft world is not that big a world, is it? So there's, there's a <laughs> no, no. And so I'm pretty sure we crossed paths. Um, and then the Lord, uh, we were up in the Northeast at this point, and the Lord radically moved us by way of dreams and visions and all this crazy stuff, which I had no grid for, uh, to head up the arts at Morningstar. Yeah. Which we did for like 10, 12 years, which is where we met you. Yeah. Um, How incredible. Yeah. Greg, and, did you, that, when you guys got married, I mean, did you have any idea that both of you were going to be full time working artists and going on this ad adventure together? Was that the plan from the beginning or did that kind of unfold for you guys? Well, we, um, <clears throat> give a little bit of your background yeah, um, too, because his yeah. stuff. Tails in, and then we can answer that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just say, age wise, I'm 10 years senior in age to Susan. So I have been uh, working in the professional art world for quite a long time. Yeah. And I met Susan. And I met her uh, at Ohio State University. I was hired to be a guest lecturer for in the painting and sculpture department. <clears throat> and uh, which was for a uh, I don't remember the length of time. It wasn't extremely long. Anyway, um, what I'm getting at is that the process of being involved in the arts and making art, being an art maker, was never out of the picture. It mm. was always in the picture. Yeah. So the issue of redemption within that just added to the picture, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. One thing added to the other, both going both ways. So as we continued on, um, it just made perfect sense that we would do that in the arts. The surprise was, as we went on, we found that there wasn't a lot of art doings in the church at that time. Surprise! surprise. Yeah. In the early 80s. Yeah. Late, early 80s. So yeah. we didn't know that. So. I was very surprised by it. I was. Mm. Really, really surprised. Uh, 
So one of the things I mention often when I'm speaking to other people in groups or whatever, is that I spent all of these years in the church, going from place to place and so on, and hoping for and looking for encounters with other individuals who'd come from the professional art world, yeah. from that background. I found none. Mm. None. Even living in New I lived in New York for 14 years. <clears throat> there were none that were happening there either. And then one night, we were speaking at a conference up in Massachusetts on a Friday night, and I was talking about this particular point. And there was a lady sitting three, four rows back from the front, and she sort of meekly goes like this. Uh -huh. And I stopped, I looked at her, and I said, you have come from the professional background in the arts? Yes. <clears throat> I went and talked to her after the meeting. Poor lady was a wreck. I mean, she was just terribly beat up and discouraged and all that. Um, I couldn't do much for her. I just to try and encourage her that, like, all's not lost, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, that was it. And I found all of that really very strange. I did. Mm -hmm. and so going into Morningstar initially, I was also sort of thinking that that wasn't the case. Uh, because we had spent many times going to Morningstar before we ended up moving to the South. Sure. And there were plenty of people involved, it seemed to me, as we were going in and out of there. But the my sense of involvement and maybe a lot of the other people's sense of involvement weren't exactly the same thing. Yeah. So uh, it just made the road a little more bumpy. And in answer to your question, we always knew we'd be doing art. Yeah. But we didn't know that the Lord would literally, by way of dreams, visions, and words, bring us into church culture. Mm. Because he wanted us, who had been part of the art world, part of kingdom art yes. Yes. and living, yes. to bring that in. Right. We did not. That was never in the picture. And, and even when it happened, then he said, and I don't want you to show for a while. I went, because I've been showing in galleries. I'm like, are you nuts? You're killing me. <laughs> don't you know how this works? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you're killing me. And then I'm walking down Main Street at Morningstar. You know what that looks like, you know, Disney yeah. World a little. And I hear, I'm like, we both know that ministry is not defined by inside, yeah. right? So I'm hearing silence. <laughs> 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 but but the reason I believe we experienced the lack is so, like you, we could be part of yeah. the, an the answer, because that's what he said. Yeah. Quit complaining. Yeah. Be part of the solution. And, and that, that journey after that, that piece of it, it, it was, was and is amazing, which yeah. is why we're here having a conversation. Yeah. I'm, tr I'm trying to think back historically late 70s early 80s i mean i'm thinking maybe the only person that would have been talking about arts and and being a christian would have been like what francis schaefer i mean but that read been, the from, books yeah i mean that would have been so were you guys involved in all that was going on with that and hearing that at all or i did uh, initially i did a lot of research when i was having trouble with finding any, anything going on I started doing research. I thought, this is crazy. This system doesn't make sense. So I encountered Francis Schaeffer's son. Yes. And uh, um, I read, there was something that he wrote. I guess, I guess it was a book. I read that. A great book called Addicted to Mediocrity, I think it's called. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so, of course, I then uh, connected with what his father had been involved with. And, researched a lot of that. And there was another a fellow named uh, Rupmacher. Rupmacher's book, yeah. Which uh, he wrote a piece that was called uh, Art Needs No Justification, mm. which is an excellent piece excellent. of yeah. Yeah, writing about all this. Um, Rupmacher and um, Schaefer were contemporaries, and they were friends. And Rupmacher, um, as I recall, he did a lot of speaking, but 
there was one particular thing that he did in the UK. And uh, I don't remember the name of, there was some sort of event that was going on in the UK at, at that time, or in that time period. Um, there was sort of an annual gathering of some sort, and he went there and he spoke, and he sort of broke all this loose, where he started talking about the arts and the culture and the church and yeah, so on. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, that that was my ex exploring of this. Yeah. Um, of course, and there was never an opportunity to meet up with those fellows. It was just not in the time frame. Sure. I was thinking about you. There was a, a woman who came to one of our conferences years ago, and um, she mentioned to me uh, that she was, you know, running around in those circles back in the day as a professional artist, as a Christian, that sort of thing. And she said, Matt, this thing that God's called you to have raising up an army of artists, she said, she felt like she remembered. I've never been able to document it anywhere, but she said, I feel like that I heard Francis Schaefer talk about that, that, you know, that because everything they were talking about back then was so world shaking, culture shaking, all of this sort of thing, yeah. this idea of raising up an army of artists. But mm -hmm. it, it's amazing to me, I think, you know, the ebbs and flows that happen in the body of Christ and historically where you can have something so powerful. And then if legacy is not continued, you know, then that can go underground for 10, 20, 30 years. And I think we're in a real resurgence right now, it seems, of uh, of people really beginning to understand the power of what God's called us to as artists, not only in our own lives individually, but also culturally and in the body, and um, that we're these carriers of his light and life and, and, and culture transforming, you know, culture shaking people. So I just, I love the perspective that you guys bring, because I think that it's so easy for people to, to think, oh, prophetic art, that's this thing that's been going about 10 years or whatever. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this, is, this is this long journey that, that believers have been right. uh, pioneering and, and walking in for a lot of years. Yeah, I think of it as, um, if you think of it in terms of water current, mm. there's, there's a current of all of this that's going on in the spirit. It's just constantly moving. Yeah. And it rises to the surface, and then it submerges again. It rises to the surface and submerges again. I think it's been doing that for an extremely long time. Yeah. Longer than we might even imagine. Yeah. And so what we're, what, what the point I'm trying to get to is that um, that time period with Schaefer and Rufmacher, that was one of those times where it was coming to the surface. Yeah. And then I think it submerged again after that for a time. Yeah. And it's coming to the surface again. Yeah, but the time frame of that actual rising and falling is something that is not easily discernible to all of us mm. because that has to do with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Yeah, yeah, discernment, right? So good. <clears throat> I love that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the thing that we're all, you know, keeping our ears like the sons of Issachar, right? And know the know the times and know what to do. You know, keep your ear to the ear to the spirit. So right. So yeah. Susan, you you guys, I know are. I think when I look at the seasons of, of your life and, you know, as you've been walking this journey, knowing how to keep your ear to the spirit and to maintain a flow with the Holy Spirit and at the same time be able to pivot practically yeah. from, okay, we're in full-time art business. Okay, now we're in full-time ministry. Okay, now we're doing a little bit of both. <laughs> you know, this, this is not just simple, like turn on the light switch, turn off the light switch stuff. So, Talk about those changes, you know, throughout your journey, because those are transition periods. I've just learned over the years. I, I think you would say the same transition periods can be wonderful times of, of closest to the Lord. They can also be times where the enemy wants to come in and take advantage because footing could be unsure. So how have you guys navigated that uh, so well over the years? Yeah. Um, for me, early on, uh, in my walk with the Lord, it it blew my mind to know, as I would like be walking around knowing I was walking around with the God of the universe. Like, yeah. like I just, that I would look at the trees, I'd walk around and think about my yard, I'd think about what I was doing. But that, because I when I had an encounter with him, I literally had a studio in Los Angeles. Mm. I was painting, mm. I was a mess. And it was, I cried out, like, if you're really there, you know, you're up there and I'm down here and what the heck. And I'm like having massive anxiety attacks and whatever. And I'm showing and I'm like, yeah. 
living my dream, but I wasn't okay. And I knew I wasn't. And I had one of those encounters where he literally physically went, mm. <laughs> I freaked out like, oh my God, you're really real. And my life changed literally yeah. because it was so dramatic. So the knowledge that he valued who I was. Um, and I know, you know, he paid a price for me and all that, you know, you understand that, but to understand that internally, mm. personally, yeah. as both an artist and one filled with him, um, is what kept me through every step of the way. And he would expand that understanding. Yeah. The valuing. Um, because it would be so hard. You'd think, oh my God, I'm never going to make it. And then something happens like we lost that studio. Mm. Are you saying when Soho flipped over downtown LA, it flipped over and became a place for architects and lawyers. And all wow. of us wow. paid almost nothing and had 2,000 square foot spaces <laughs> on entire floors. It didn't exist anymore. And you think, wow. now wow. what do we do? Right? Yeah. So you know, am I going to even make it as an artist? You know, the normal thought you'd have anyway. <laughs> um, but the valuing, the constant valuing through everything mm. is really what kept me. And also when we um, were able, with the art directors at Morningstar, with the people we were with, I would say, he's for you. Yeah. And he yeah. will show up and show you. He will show up and show you. He always does because he always did. Yeah. No matter how dark or hard it was, he always would, I would say, give you a big hug or a smooch. Yeah. And like yeah. one of the girls who had gone through some mind set shifts was painting her heart out for like a year. And she would take a year like to do a painting. And someone bought it. And when that happened, I said, yeah, because the Lord did talk to me. And this is mindset stuff. Kingdom. He talked to me about valuing with, with money. Yeah. And he said to me, I know where you were raised, which is New York. And I raised you there for a reason. And I know I can speak to you through money. Mm. So. It's, it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Right? When I'm hearing you talk about that, you know, the identity piece in your own life, two things, you know, are coming to my mind. Number one, you had an encounter with Jesus, which there's no, there's no replacing that. Right. And also there's this also what we're talking about, you know, all the time, like a broken record is this, you know, cultivating your heart and mind, cultivating that identity, continually mm -hmm. being filled with his presence, continually, intentionally renewing your mind. Um, talk about that, you know, not only in your own life, uh, for you, even as a married couple, but also the people that, that you worked with over the years, because that doesn't happen on autopilot. And yet I'm hearing you say, this is our one thing. This is the thing that, that is the constant throughout all of the transition, the ups and downs, the, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, well, first of all, my sense of, in regards to the last issue that Susan was just discussing is the um, for me it's an issue of trust mm. when I got redeemed it was a radical transformation that took place in the middle of the wilderness so to speak I was in Alaska and it's a very long story I'm not going to tell you that story it's very very long but there are a lot of very supernatural elements to it and within that I found myself in a situation having to deal with an issue of trust. Mm. Was I able to trust what was happening? Was I able to trust the reality of all this? Whatever. And that was a very small little piece. And as, it, as time went on, and I went on doing what I was doing, uh, I was working as a professional artist, um, it always it was an issue of faith and trust faith and trust. That, that hit me just really hard, real fast when I was a very young Christian. Mm. Um, a lot of the ministry stuff that I've done with people over the years has been over that issue of trust. A lot of people don't quite grasp the fact that God trusts them. Mm. That's good. They, they just sort of lose sight of that, or they, right. they never made aware of it. 
And I would say to people, a lot of times when I was doing prophetic ministry, I'd just say, you know, the Lord trusts you. And boom, they would just start changing things. <laughs> so for me, it's always been this long, it's, it's, it's sort of like the story of following the breadcrumbs through the forest. You know, like, oh, here's another crumb. Oh, oh here's yeah. another one. Come on. As this started out for me, it was much like that. I was sort of given a crumb of this and a crumb of that. And from, I don't mean that in a negative sense, but it was, it was like something that I had to follow. And I had to do that with trust and in faith. So I began to realize that I had already lived, I was in my 30s when this happened, and I had already lived much of my adult life living in faith, making art. Because all the art I was making up to that point, and even up to today, is made in faith. Yeah, sure. I just make it, you know. Um, the other things follow suit. So I, I really try to emphasize that a lot in terms yeah. of speaking to people just in general in a, in a church culture, mm -hmm. but also uh, particularly in the arts. Um, yeah, I think it's a really needed area of uh, information. Yeah, because the enemy is all about you know, sowing that disconnection and sowing doubt. And, you know, if you're the son of God, right, if you if you can really do what, what God's called you to do and learning to assume that place of connection as sons and daughters, right? That's the, so much of what identity is about that I'm not, I'm not getting up begging for this every day. I'm getting up receiving and walking in the truth that's already there. And that's, that's so yeah. huge. Right. And I love that. I love too what you said, Greg, about, you know, you were creating by faith even before you knew what, what faith was, because exactly. I just, you know, I love talking the, you know, this idea that the, you know, the kingdom creativity is not extra or just to the side, but creativity is how the kingdom works that we see and agree with heaven. And we bring those things that are not as though they were into the earth realm by our agreement and by our skillful response and the, and the things. And, and I love the fact too, maybe you can, even talk about this just as a as somebody that's been on both sides of this this journey as we all have you know the creative investment that god gives at the moment of creation is is not something that he takes away from us if we're unredeemed it's still there the investments still there his gifts and callings wow. are out with out repentance and even though we may not know that like you say we're creating by faith or that we're connected to this beautiful um divine part of the nature of god it's still there and it's still, I think, very powerful uh, in our life. And, I, and for many artists, God uses that, that investment of his divine nature to draw us back to him, which is kind of what it sounds like he did with, with both of you guys, that yeah, it was no. in the context of your creative process that he says, hey, this is who you really are. This is who I really am. Keep yes. going, keep going this way. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and and the prophetic actually has a lot to do with, with with that process. Um, I don't, uh, and I know some people do, but I don't call myself a prophetic artist because yeah. I've always been one. And and I say, but the actual uh, hearing of the Lord prophetically in revelation, in dreams, and visions, and in words have saved my life. Yeah. They um, ju just, you know, when you were saying, well, how do you, how does the renewing of the mind? Well, number one, classic, highlighting stuff in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. I'll have a dream. I'll have a vision. I had something happen this morning. I'm thinking, well, I did not make that up. And then I hear this scripture, you know, it's the usual. It's so weird. Some of the stuff from God. So weird. You know, you have a wild <laughs> imagination, but you did not make that one up. <laughs> I love it. And then I'm hearing this sort of scripture running through. I thought I should look that up. And literally, when I look it up, I'm hearing the prayer I had prayed before I had gone to sleep, but it was mm. in the Psalms, mm. you know, and, and that's how it's in your absolute personal connection all the time, yeah. all the time is the constant shifting and changing. Also, listening to people, and you know this, I said this to you earlier, like yourself, who've been the journey, who can help you get through things quicker, yeah. break through. And mindsets shifts so much quicker 
than the pioneers like yourself or us, where it might have taken a bit longer, right? Uh, it might have been a bit rougher. Um, you can get this now from people who already walked that journey. Yeah. And I think that that's extremely important. And um, and then I've also had things happen uh, the fall before the COVID shutdown. Um, uh, someone just took my hand. I'd gone through a fire tunnel. I'd been painting live. And this older man said to me, um, I don't know if you have a website or not, but you need to get one God wants to build a business with you. Mm. Now, he had been talking to me for about two more years, two years previous that about coming back into what I'm doing now. Yeah. But I was loving painting live so much. I was like, whatever. <laughs> enjoyed it. Ministering and painting and the sound. Um, but when he said that to me, I knew it was a signal. Mm. And I got onto it. Yeah. And I built a new website. I did what I had to do. In February, before the March shutdown, I had launched my online business. Wow. Praise God. You think I was fine through yeah. that year? Praise yeah. God. You are not kidding. Yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. So it's also those things along the way. And and yes, pivot, man. I when I when you get, when I heard that, I shifted, I learned, and I know that's part of what you teach people. Branding, the website. Yeah. It's all and I was like, all righty. And then I my whole life changed again. Yeah. It changed. I was no longer painting live. I couldn't. I learned how to do Facebook lives and paint live. You know <laughs> what they're gonna do, right? You just you know, let me let me ask you because I get this question a lot, and I'm I'm sure you guys have too. You know, any for all of us, changing seasons is required, right? Nothing as much as I love to talk about, you know, vision from God and knowing His plan for your life and everything. That plan is never static. That plan is never, you know, you're going to do this thing for the next thirty years. Like, you know, God's called me to raise up an army of artists, as you know, in, in 2009. But my goodness, the way that that has actually happened is changes and has turns and ups and downs and that sort of thing. So for, you know, you're talking about hearing God's voice, you know, scripture, um, you know, prophetic revelation, all those sort of things. How do you guys bring that together as a couple? Because I know Tanya and I, you know, we've been married this year, will be 25 years. Um, Congratulations. We, I know, right? We, yeah. We hear God differently, process things differently. I'm like a big picture, fast mover. Tanya's more of a, um, she sees the the administrative sort of step-by-step -step things and likes to spend a little more time processing. So how have you guys learned to to do that as a couple? Because hearing God is not something that you do as a vac in a vacuum when, when you're married. It's something that you're trying to do together. And usually as you bring those things together, there's a real wisdom and maturity and, and fullness that comes that you would have never got by yourself. Yeah. Well, there's also a lot of tension. <laughs> Come on. Oh, it's a tug. <laughs> it can be a tug of war. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Susan likes, Susan likes to, to joke about this a lot. She says, well, you know, we're both firstborns in our family. So it's an issue of who's. <laughs> 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 um, we have a lot of intense discussions. Mm -hmm. We always Good have. It's, yeah. it, it's the way we've always communicated. I mean, it can go on for days. Yeah. And, yeah. And even weeks in terms of, you know, day or two passes and you write back and you start it again and so on yeah. and so on. Whether we're trying to resolve some sort of conflict issue or a provision issue, whatever it might be, that's a normal sort of process for us. And I think that's pretty much how we've been able to do this. I, um, years ago, had heard, I didn't, years ago, know left brain, right brain, whatever. Right. I didn't know. And I would be like, you're an artist. Like, you're popping every bubble, every vision. <laughs> you're just like putting a hole in it by saying, but what about this? What about this? What about this? I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> well, I understood. Because he's an artist, I'm thinking he'd be like that too, right? But yeah. that's not true. You're not either one. It's where you start. Yeah, yeah. And there's two sides for a reason. And once I understood that, then I could begin to look and value, and this is really key, to value the fact that he 
has is much more orderly and and cautious and has stopped me from going over a cliff. Yeah. And the flip side is when he's not moving, I'm like, okay, what do I got to do? Yeah. You know, you got to shift. And we, and so the Lord has really with respect and valuing where each other, and that's, I think key. And I had to learn that, you know, early on to respect where he's coming from, to value it and to know it's the Lord too, you know, <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. it's different. And, and, and that's also part of it. So when he says something, he'll stop me in my tracks. I might not like it because I'm ready. <laughs> Literally, I could be on my way with keys in the car. Yeah. The car. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, could we really rethink this move? Oh, crap. Okay. <laughs> Slow it down. Obviously, <laughs> obviously, there's the issue of patience. Because yeah. <clears throat> a lot of things cannot be resolved quickly, instantaneously. It's wonderful when they do happen that way, but most of them do not, as you well know. Uh, so there's the issue of patience and uh, being able to endure through all whatever is going on to get to the resolution. Yeah. And sometimes um, it can come from a third party as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. or m multiple, two or three people might say something, you might discuss a piece of this with somebody else, and you get an insight or, or whatever. And sometimes you may even get a whole answer. Mm -hmm. That hasn't happened a whole lot with me personally, but I've, I've gotten insights from people, certainly. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, I think just learning to, I know for Tanya and I, just learning to receive each other as a gift, you know, like you're saying, you know, honor the thing that, that the Lord's doing in that person, that he's He's not trying to kill you, or maybe he is, but he's trying to complete you, you know, in, in, sure. in this process. But I, you know, I think about, just in our, I mean, marriage, I could say so many stories, but I mean, even in our business, just practically, you know, I had grown a successful art business and all that kind of stuff and pretty much done that. You know, that was kind of my world and Tanya was in, in teaching and that sort of thing and would always give input, but it was kind of my baby. And, but then when I started the mentoring program, you know, I just kind of did that the same way. I built it like I would build it and really kind of built it on a, a kind of a church ministry centric model. I just grabbed people that I loved and I said, come on, let's change some lives. Let's, let's do this, you know? And, um, and we got to a certain level of impact and influence, but it wasn't until Tanya's gifting was able to come into the business. And, um, when she, <laughs> when she first came in, we called it the year of the machete because she was like, now, what are you doing here? And why are you spending time doing this? And did you know that you replicated this three times and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it was like, ouch, 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 whoa, 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 hold on, you know? And, um, but I look back and within a year and a half or so of her coming in, the business doubled and the next year it doubled again. Wow. And we were having more influence, uh, more opportunity to grow, touching more lives with less work on us and our staff. Oh, and I'm on. like, send Tanya my way. Go I know, on. exactly. <laughs> but it's like, that was the power of that gifting. I'm, and I'm like, you know, it just was really, because the Lord speaks to me with money as well, just like you were you were saying, it's a real easy way to get your attention. And um, in fact, the Lord was just telling me this morning, because we've been in some transition, and he, I woke up just wide awake at one o'clock this morning. I was like, are you kidding? Like, what? I've been in Hawaii all week. Why away? I'm like, what is going on? And he, he just started ministering to me. He said, Matt, I'm teaching you to hold the tension. I'm mm -hmm. teaching you to be content in this place where what you've had is not what you're going to have, but where you're going is not where you are right now. And mm -hmm. can, you, can you hold this tension with me and be okay in the process? Mm -hmm. And I'm getting there, you know, we're all getting there, but it, I think if we, when we learn to trust the Lord and trust our spouses in the middle of that and, and can walk um, in, in that, in that beautiful balance, there's real uh, beauty and power that comes, comes out of that. You know, one of the, the things that yes. we end up discussing, uh, having discussions about quite often is the, the overall role of the visual arts in church culture. Yeah. And what is what is that about? What's it what's its purpose? You know, all of that. Uh, how does it fit historically? How does it fit in Revelation and so on? <clears throat> so for us, I think that's 
a, just a continual ongoing process and question. Mm. And um, my sense of it at the moment is that the visual arts, well, here we are. We're at the, the almost at the end of the first quarter of the 21st century. Right. In terms of time, and then in terms of the, let's talk about technology for a minute. We have a telescope sitting at uh, Lagrange 2 or whatever it is, balanced between the Earth, Sun, and the Moon and all that, looking into the distance as further than anybody's ever seen before. We have robots wandering around on a planet taking endless photographs of all kinds of strange looking things on the ground, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. We've sent probes to Pluto, we've sent probes to Venus, all this stuff. And the, the rapid development of all of that in time is really rapid. When you mm -hmm. think about it in terms of time scale, yeah, yeah. it's almost instantaneous that this has happened. But when then you think about the role of the visual arts within church government and the unfolding of church government on the earth, yeah. you've got, it's like the, the race of the tortoise and the hare, right? And the tortoise seems to be the church side of the issue about the government of the arts and the government of God and all this stuff is just sort of dragging along. And that to me is really becoming the issue. I've been looking at this from a, a little bit of a different perspective where I see it. Um, church government to me is an, an eight person entity. It's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Apostle, the Prophet, the Pastor, the Teacher. The yeah. yeah. And that's the way it's supposed to be functioning. And we're not real close to that. I mean, we're on the edge of it, I think, but we're not too far along. Um, the role of the visual arts has got to have a place at the table of leadership in mm. the church. I really believe that. And I believe it in the sense that it has to be there, not just as a decorative function, not just as a, a, a side meeting activity, but as an actual interactive voice in how the church would function. It has to do with problem solving, it has to do with innovation, all those issues, which we seem to have so much trouble with yeah. all of the time. And if we don't get this moving along <laughs> a little more, I think we're going to have, a, uh, within the next 25, 50 years, we're going to have a really hard time. Yeah. Really, really tough. I was speaking with a fellow in Texas uh, a few months ago. We were on a trip there. <clears throat> and he, he said something to me that he believed that the Lord is not going to empower the church in the future based on the condition it's in right now. Mm. It won't happen because there's just too much th that is askew still for it to be, it wouldn't be able to actually handle the amount of power. The fullness he wants to bring. Wants right. to bring forth. <laughs> yeah, it just, it would be like, uh, and um, I think the visual arts actually have a role in all of that to help solidify a lot of it. So what I'm getting at is that the role to me at the present is to bring the um, the opportunity for the visual arts to help strengthen right. the local church. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I mean that across the board. I don't mean just in the governmental sense, but also within the sense of the whole body of the church. There's a uh, there's a strengthening issue that is available there through yeah. the visual arts. Yeah. I love that. We were just talking about that this last week when I was at YWAM Kona and uh, suffering for Jesus in Hawaii, praise the Lord. But <laughs> just just talking about, you know, that since the Protestant Revolution, Reformation, uh, you know, it's kind of like the baby got thrown out with the bathwater. And we, you know, Christianity has been reduced to this, this rules of, of do's and don'ts and this sort of heady experience when it was the kingdom was never designed to be that that's not the kingdom you see jesus preaching the kingdom jesus preaching was 
was it was beauty and interaction and love and <laughs> and experience you know and it's it's i think that's what you're part of what you're saying there is that it's it's artists yeah. both visual artists performing artists that that mm-hmm. bring in this holistic sense of the beauty of God and who he is and what he wants mm-hmm. to do. And when we marry that with the truth, you know, truth, beauty, and goodness all together, mm-hmm. uh, we see the fullness of, of uh, what God wants to do in and through um, his people. So I Amen. love that. Amen. Yeah. Could, I want, if you don't mind, I want to go back to what you were talking about holding tension. Yeah. Yeah. Cause when you were saying that, and then he's talking about the Hubble over here and the this thing over here and it's balanced and I'm, it was just going like this for me. And, and what I mean by that is, I know that's what he was saying to you personally, but I believe that's a word. Yeah. That's where we're at. Yeah. That is where, I, I believe that's where we're at. I, and, and even with what Greg's talking about, um, and I'm going to uh, actually consider what you were saying. Yeah. Uh, because I really believe that that's for you personally, but it's also a word to yeah. most of us as well. I think it's yeah. a word for the body. Yeah. Yeah. It Amen. It's really resonated. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's so easy. I mean, I've, you know, we all find ourselves in that place, right. Of I want what I want and I want it now, you know, whether it's for the glory of God or for the glory of me, that's got how I'm wired, you know? And, and I think it's, it's, but it's in those moments of, of holding that tension that he does so, mm-hmm. such beautiful work. And so, yeah. um, well, guys, I, I love hearing your story, your uh, gifts yeah. to not only the art world, but the, the world in general and to the body of Christ and, uh, just, God continues to do so many wonderful things uh, in and through you. I would love it if maybe we could just take a moment and y'all could release a blessing just on all of the artists all over the world that are are listening and are trying to hold that tension and trying to walk faithfully in, in the things that God's got for them uh, in the kingdom. Would y'all do that? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. You go first, um, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lord, I know that you are always present and always looking, seeing, and hearing and always have the best in mind for us continually. So Father, within that context, I release a blessing now upon every pair of ears and every pair of eyes that has watched this conversation that they will have the ability to hear and to see and to experience all that you have in relationship to yourself, the kingdom, and them, and their part in it. Their part of innovation and growth and change and personal development, all of these issues. Lord, I ask that it come quickly, even at this very moment, all over the planet. I don't care about the time frame differences between space and time and this side of the planet and that. It's all instantaneous, Lord. I ask it all come instantaneously now. Now, now, now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you also for that whispering voice of the Spirit, that peaceful, restful, whispering voice of the Spirit that helps, 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 and informs us, informs us, says, turn to the right, turn to the left. Mm-hmm. Yes, no. Sit, mm-hmm. laugh, yeah. yell. Yeah. Rejoice, sing. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Create. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lord, I just release. Lord, I always say this anything you've given me that can be imparted to someone else that would bless them mm-hmm. and bring them closer to you and to their destiny. I ask, Lord, that you would just release that now mm-hmm. in your spirit with your love. And I also ask for a deepening of an understanding of how important each and every one of you are. Mm -hmm. The valuing of who you are and your gift and Mm -hmm. what you do because you would be doing something else. Mm -hmm. It's really that simple. So I ask for each person, Lord, that there would be a tangible evidence, a kiss, a hug that comes from you and what they're doing and they'll know what that is. And even if someone, you want to lay out a challenge, whatever, but that there would be a tangible hug or kiss for each person yeah. to know, yes, you are really with them mm. in what they're doing and how much you love and value. And I know 
Lord, that when you had brought me back into the church culture to paint live, and I was like, oh, Jesus, I don't even know what you like. <laughs> and you said, I like what you like. And I went, oh, okay. There you have it. Know that he likes what you like. Yeah. So Lord, I thank you for the blessing of trust. Mm. Thank you for the blessing of trust. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, Matt, thank you. This was oh, really what a blessing to have you guys. What a blessing. Thank you. I know so it. I know it. Much. Listen, I know folks are going to want to um, connect with you guys. So you've got uh, websites for your art and for all that. Everybody go buy tons of art and sell them out. So where can they, uh, where can everybody find you guys online to connect more? Um, I'm on Instagram. Susan's on Instagram. Both of us have accounts there. Um, Gregcard2.com is right. that's one uh, web that I have. I have another one. It's older. It's historical, which is just gregcard.com. Uh -huh. And I have uh, susancardfineart.com. If you awesome. go there, you can find a link to a group I have called Wonderland of Color on Facebook, which is really a lot of fun. I paint live and do process stuff. Nice. And, but you'll also find a link to my Instagram if you don't want to have to remember it all. Just go right. to my website right. and you'll find links to both. Yeah. Right. And we'll put all and those links in the show notes so everybody can grab those and, and yeah. click right over to them. That'd so be great. That'd be great. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. What a joy to have you guys on today. So thanks. Thanks so much for being with me.